Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is vocalist, pianist, composer, educator, and we'll probably find some more labels for you, Don Clement, who is talking to us from New York while they are releasing a brand new project and engaging in a brand new project, always new projects to do. So welcome, Don. Thank you so much, Monica. It's so great to have you. And we'll talk about some of your music that you already did, some of the upcoming music. And of course, it's always the most interesting thing to see how does somebody get into jazz? What's the attraction? What's what's the entry point? So share a little bit how how you got bitten by the jazz bug. I you know, was around music as a kid growing up in church singing hymns. My mom played piano. My grandpa was a preacher. We're around all of that. When I was 10, I just was begging for a piano because I'd been watching, you know, her play at church and our neighbors play the organ. And so we got this old player piano and I, I took from a teacher who taught me how to read the notes and we worked on Scott Joplin. And then I, I did classical through middle school. And in high school, we heard this announcement that they needed a stage pianist in the stage band. That's what they called it. So I did that because I was very shy and I had no outlet. I went and played Mozart and the band director said, oh, perfect, you're in. And I was lost that first year, just completely awful. I went to high school near Portland, Oregon and Ron Steen, a great drummer, Ron Steen, till to this day runs regular jam sessions almost every night of the week. So the high school band, some of the members would take us to the jam and I just remember playing a 12 bar blues for the first time and being so sick to my stomach you know being so emotional after I played just like crying like oh my gosh it was that moment of playing the blues where I don't know that I chose jazz I think it chose me because as nerve-wracking as it was it was also so liberating that was the beginning the beginnings you know I, I, I love that you said I, I did the same thing when I was 10 years old I begged for a piano because this piano was calling there's there's something about these 88 keys that just want to be played and then just to trace where, where did you get your education and, and went on from there well I got really into jazz after that point and really into playing all kinds of music I played with a lot of singers and I started to write music in high school and I played for ballet that was my first job when I was 15 playing the Royal Academy book I did that all through college but I got a scholarship to Cornish in Seattle Washington and at that time there were some beautiful educators there Julian Priester and Hadley Calliman and James Knapp Jay Clayton, Jerry Grinelli. I went to Cornish. That was a thing that really blessed my parents not having to pay and that was my undergrad. Then I got married and had a couple kids and bought a house and worked and got my master's in my 30s and I got my master's in Vermont at Vermont College of Fine Arts and I did a composition degree and that was a low residency program that allowed a, you know, you said we'd find some other titles that allowed a working mom to do a, a master's. That is very cool. And the first piece we're gonna listen to, one of your compositions, A Delicate Balance, you told me that it's actually from one of your first working groups, right? You wanna share before we listen to it, what to, to listen for and what the group is? This was, as I mentioned, one of my teachers was Julian Priester. Julian has a great legacy. If you go down that rabbit hole, he's played on so, so many records, Sun Ra, Herbie Hancock, even with Duke Ellington, you know. But he was my teacher, and then as is kind of sometimes normal for the tradition, I started playing with him, right? In this band, was another former student and classmate of mine named Byron Van Noy on drums, Jeff Harper, great Seattle bassist playing bass. Priester made it really clear and that it was the most important thing to bring original music. And so he asked each of us to write a piece for this first record. And I think I was experimenting with going in and out of time and a drone. So there's kind of a D minor drone here and picturing his horn and his sound and the melody that happens on this piece really for him to play. I think you were channeling a little bit of Chikoria and some now he sings, now he sops on that too. So here it is, a delicate balance from In Deep and Dance, 2003 release featuring Julian Priester and Byron Vinoy and Jeff Harper and my guest today, Don Clement on piano and composition.
that was a delicate balance from the album in deep and dance featuring my guest today don clement on piano we were just chatting a little bit about influences and about moving forward this next one we're gonna go for there's a lot of bebop stuff in there so it's it's a little bit different language and a lot of like playing together really hard lines so and a pretty new project a trio project i i would love from you to hear especially working in small formats in this type of trio project how that works and what your attraction is i formerly lived in seattle for about 18 plus years. And when I was living there for part of that time, there was a great bassist in town named John Hamer. And John moved to Tennessee a couple years before I moved. You know, we moved to Colorado in 2018. And before we moved, John kept telling me about this guitarist named Steve Kowalczyk. He said, you gotta meet Steve. You guys gotta play together. You know, simpatico, just like John and I is one of my favorite people to play with. I had heard about Steve and then we moved and we finally played our first gig at Nocturne, and it happened to be a trio setting, bass, guitar, piano, which I hadn't ever done that configuration, and there's something kind of intricate and special about getting to play with a guitarist as a pianist, you know, and especially Steve. He's just brilliant and beautiful. Last August, coming sort of out of COVID, out of a season of pretty serious COVID. John was coming through town and we threw together a trio session. And I wrote this tune, it's Contrafact on Do It The Hard Way, actually. I wrote this tune as a playful game of baseball for us in a way, right? Trio playing, um, the rest of the record is very moody and it has some much different, more vibier pieces on it, right? But this is the bebop fun hardball. The bebop fun. And I love the way it's not like bebop, like everybody playing their own bebop line, but this communal improv on it too. All right, let's have it. So here is Heartball. This is from a brand new release. This features my guest today, Don Clement on piano, John Hamer on the bass, and Steve Kowalczyk on the guitar. That was Hardball from a very new release by my guest today, Don Clement, who you heard on piano. Also featuring John Hamer on the bass and Steve Kowalczyk on guitar. Talking about new projects and, and new releases, you know, so I'm talking to you here from Germany where I'm touring my all-female group through a ser series of concert and I started this in 2014 and it's been incredible to see all of them so many <laughs> pop up which is exactly the purpose you know it's just the more there are the wave is gonna change the landscape and that's that's why we're doing this and so Aesthesis is the name of the project 
and it features some great musicians. You got Elsa Nielsen on the flute and Emma Dehu on the bass and, and Tina Raymond, who I remember from being in Cincinnati as a student on, on drums. I want to know a little bit, A, about the project and the name and you're on vocals. <laughs> I'm really excited about this new group and I love what you said. I think representation, it really matters. and. There's more and more of it and, you know, I have nothing but respect and gratefulness to every female band leader and mentor I've had. Dating back to Sisters in Jazz with Ingrid Jensen, that was right. Fun. I will say that I don't think we intentionally put an all-girl band together. It was really aesthetically and creatively where we were meeting in one place. And it started with Elsa and I. Elsa and I had known each other since our Cornish days. She was one of my first right. students. We come full circle to get to play together, which is such an honor for me. We we're in COVID, in the thick of COVID, and feeling a little discouraged, and we started to meet on Zoom, and we wanted to build a little community that way and talk about composition, and so that's really how it started, was a little composition support group. We thought, well, let's ask Tina if she wants to meet with us. Elsa and Tina met at the Gen Conference, I think the year prior to that. I had known Tina for a few years, but we'd never played any music, and so we started hanging out. We were doing a once a month Zoom. And then we said, well, how about a bass player? And Tina said, well, how about Emma? And none of us knew Emma. You know, Elsa and I had never met Emma. So that's how it started. And we started to share compositions and then we started tracking and sending each other some things. And that ended up being some compositions, but also some free playing tracked virtually, which was a really fun experiment. Oh. And Elsa had written this piece called Partial. And she said, do you want to put lyrics to it? And so I did. So that's what this piece is. We safely met last August and recorded this album and it comes out May 27th. It's a really, really cool project. And I, I love what you said about this being accidentally all women, because, you know, that's also telling the way the networks work. And the more of us are involved, of course, you know, you pull in the people you trust and the people you love. And, and so the more the momentum is there, it'll be a natural equalization and it's all good and yes sisters in jazz what a monumental program right to to be in and get started what what year was that when you were in 98 iaje days very very cool and of course you know ingrid jensen is incredible mentor and role model for all of us let's hear it and i love the ethereal quality a little bit you know you have a you have a very special clear voice and and it's really enjoyable but writing lyrics is a different thing and and it changes the dynamics of of how the music comes across the moment you have vocals and and lyrics to focus on she had asked me about a double meaning there with that word and i think we did it let's find out so here's partial from the brand new release of the Aesthesis project featuring Don Clement on piano and voice and Elsa Nielsen on the flute, Emma Dehoff on the bass and Tina Raymond on drums. A partialist means incomplete these things we think but don't write Can you believe there's so much there between the dotted line Could you be partial to me Cause I can dream a long time Am I invisible to your gaze? Am I on your list? Or only in between? Doesn't mean you're floating You could 
Partial, a selection from a brand new release by the group Esthesis that features my guest Don Clement on piano and vocals on this track. You know, we talked about your education and how you got to work with mentors, but we have to point out that you are one of the few full time instrumental jazz faculty, period, anywhere. I think, you know, if we would count the instrumental faculty, we could probably still go on one hand, two hands around the whole U.S. I would love to hear a little bit, A, how you landed the job, and B, how it works. I mentioned owing a lot to those who have paved the way and paved the way. I graduated Cornish thinking I was going to move to New York. We came. My husband and I came, and I was pregnant. We decided maybe not here. That was not the exact order of things, but it was around that time after graduation that one of the the chairs at Cornish, Laura Kaminsky, she asked if I'd like to teach piano class, the lab class, and I said, sure. And then I was in. I taught there for 18 years, and uh, you know, whether I meant to stay or not, I think that allowed me to grow as an educator, to develop my pedagogical approach, to just get better and learn how to do that. And it was the place that I went to school, but it felt like it was really constantly evolving, and it allowed us to be freelancers, to be homeowners, to tour, and It was an adjunct job, Mm -hmm. but as you get older and if you decide to have a family, you realize there's provision that you need to make. And I was, I had gotten my master's and I was looking for full-time work and I had been applying through Matt Wilson. I had met Ron Miles and we had played a really fun tour of Matt's music. And I applied at the school that Ron taught at. I think this was in 2013 or 14 and I didn't get it at that time. And I kept throwing my hat in the ring and four years later I applied again 
and I did get it. It was an honor. It is an honor to step into this really beautiful program that Ron created to honor him. It's been a rough semester without Ron, and I really love what MSU Denver is doing. It's an improvised music program that includes jazz, but so much more, and the connection between styles and black American music. It's really special. I do understand that there aren't very many females in higher academia, and so I feel grateful to be a part of that. It's something I was talking with Lara Pellegrinelli about, because she's been doing a, a studied focus on that. Tina Raymond is another educator in higher education. I think the most important thing is for us to be able to pass this on, to also be a part of it still evolving and learning from this day and age what students are becoming and what they're capable of and what they're interested in. I think I learn as much from students equally as much as I might share with them. It's like really a, a different time. And so it's exciting to be in academia. I don't, uh, I don't know that I ever pictured myself as an academic, not to get too deep into it, but of course there are pros and cons to that. But it's fun to work in a team. It's fun to work with colleagues who do different things and like to push the envelope. It's now the access for students to learn jazz and improvised music. We don't have all of the same street smart opportunities, right? So. Right, you don't go in the Woody Herman band on the road right of high school anymore. You know, those opportunities are pretty much gone. So yeah. yes, the learning takes place in these new environments. And, and this sounds like a really exciting program. So what, what, what classes or what do you actually teach or get to teach there? I teach improv and I do direct the big band, combos, you know, anything that needs to be taught. Privately, I have all the vocal and piano students. All the vocal and piano students, <laughs> okay. You know, as I think anywhere that you are, it's a chance to grow with the times. And I don't think, I maybe this is going out on a ledge, but traditional education has to look the same anymore. You know, there's lots of ways for students to be successful. So I'm sorry about the loss of Ron Miles. That was unexpected and way too early. Well, let's listen to one more selection from your thesis project. This is Cricket. Is that another one of your pieces? It's one of mine. It's one of those tunes I wrote for my daughter, actually, when I was pregnant with her it felt like she was chirping all the time just jumping around and chirping and we called her cricket and we thought we would name her cricket actually we're like yeah her name's cricket and she was born and we were like oh no we can't name her this her name is Adele that was her in utero nickname but the tune didn't really have a home yet and so when I played it with a thesis quartet that was where it belonged that was its home so Here's Cricket. That's very cool. Well, let's just have a listen with that in mind. So here's Cricket by the Aesthesis Quartet. And this is by my guest today, Don Clement, also featuring Elsa Nielsen on flute, Emma Dayhoff on bass, and Tina Raymond on drums. Thank you. 
from the Esthesis Quartet to be released actually May 2022. And we just talked about work as an educator, being in academia. Yeah, you're also a mother of three. That takes a bit of a balancing act. So any words of wisdom on how to balance out full-time professorship, full-time mom, and full-time performer. I don't have any secrets. I'm not perfect and I'm not great at any one of those things. I The balance, that word, is the key. And I think creating space and self-care I'm learning are really important. But also, I don't do this alone. I have a really generous partner who has just sacrificed what he does to help raise these kids and and help me do what I do. And yeah, there's no magic number, but I don't think I'd do it any other way. It makes for a very busy and exciting life, right? One thing I've been working on is not just tapping out on my energy before I even get home, you know, saving that energy for family. And like you said, being respectful with time and balance. It teaches you a lot to have kids, doesn't it? I wouldn't want to miss it. And as you said, it takes, it takes a partner that's willing to do that. I got lucky with that too. I think he took like at least 75% of babysitting and that works and that helps. We got one coming up from an album called Islands, Pretending. You keep hearing me say, well, during COVID, we, as I'm reflecting on that just here today, talking to you, it's kind of cool because there were some major lows and major highs during that time. And I think it's still going on and we're coming out of it. The music still kind of demanded a space. Not so much demanded, but there was still room to be creative and to find different ways to do that. When we first went into quarantine and we were virtual, virtually teaching that first spring, personally, I felt so discouraged and I felt so disconnected and distant from music, from the music that I wanted to make because so much of that was related to 
the audience and playing with other musicians and having response and conversation. And I think it took maybe three months or four months of processing that over a summer and feeling like, what is the purpose here? Feeling like I couldn't authentically build my students up and convince them they're doing the right thing when I wasn't convinced entirely. But going into fall of whatever that was, 2020, definitely out of a sense of desperation and necessity for self-therapy, I started to work on songs, writing songs. And just personally, probably for half my life, that has been a, a very therapeutic way for me to get into to the music because it's just for me you know it's like like you said about writing lyrics it's it's all the way internalized right your focus is completely turned around and I think because others were experiencing that lack of work it allowed some of my colleagues and friends in the music business to be available so a guy that I went to college with actually I'm gonna see him today and we're gonna write a song together today okay. his name is John Solo he's usually very busy on the road doing all these amazing things and he was home and we said well let's do this let's let's just start with producing a song and so this was the first song we did together very reflective of how I was feeling this became an album we ended up doing I think a song a month for that year, just about, because people were available, we had someone like Shane Ensley, who was like, yeah, I'm around, sure, I'll, I'll lay a trumpet track down. You know, people were discovering skills, like recording from home. So that was the process. I'd write the song, I'd stay up till two or three in the morning and track all the parts I heard and have so much fun, because that part is very improvisational. I'd send it to John and he'd kinda, his aesthetic is really cool. And then we, we would ask someone to, you know, be a guest on it. So this is the COVID project, Islands, separated but together, collaborating without being in person, pretending. You know, and I'm glad that some of these moments are captured. So that'll be a great document for the future too, to, to have that. And I did, when I listened to it, I, I noticed that spirituality to it. Well, let's, let's have a listen. Pretending from the album Islands, a pandemic collaboration COVID project featuring my guest today, Don Clement on keys and vocals and John Solo, more keys and some effects production, Shane Ensley on the trumpet, Rob Calder on the bass and Lee Fisher on the drums. Meaningless to 
That was Pretending from the album Islands and you called it a pandemic collaboration and you were just sharing how it was suddenly possible to A, exchange tracks and music and do that together and B, to get to some of the people you don't usually work with because there's time and distance and all kinds of other factors that make it impossible. Yes, it was a huge learning curve. Did you have all these production skills or how did you get yourself into that? No way, and I'm still so slow and such a novice, but I bought a mic, a really good mic, and I had logic and I spent some time trying to get better at that and I had some tutorials, you know, but no, and I'm still not great at it. I, there are so many musicians who really have that on lock, but enough to have figured out how to at least get a good vocal sound and record my Nord and my Rhodes. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy how crisis, you know, through crisis, we improvise and come up with solutions. And I would say, especially jazz musicians have an advantage there because, you know, you do that all the time. You make your brain work and improvise every day. So you're ready for these crisis situations <laughs> in, in some way. Yeah, let's just go right in and, and get another taste from, from that album and, and more of these before we get to our final one. So this one is actually called Watercolor words of course has you again don clement on on keys and some vocals on here and john solo more effects and keys and production and galen green and woodwinds recorded september 2020 to june 21 that was in the depth of it so here's watercolor words
That was Watercolor Words from the Islands album, a pandemic collaboration album by my guest today, Don Clement. We're going to have time for one more, which is sweet and lovely. So we're actually ending up with a treatment of a standard in this case and a great trio with uh, Dean Johnson and Matt Wilson on drums. But you're sitting here in New York and you're working on some really cool new things. Actually share a little bit about the grand prize project and where that's leading you and having those opportunities like a grand power that makes things possible. Chamber music has so many offerings and um, feel so excited and ecstatic to be the recipient of the Performance Plus grant, which is a composition grant to write for a specific group and work with an artist educator. So I applied to write for Esthesis Quartet. Our artist educator is Bill Frizzell and we had our first rehearsal yesterday and it was really beautiful and I think some of the music I started to write, these were just initial ideas I brought yesterday but definitely before Ron Miles and there's a nice connection there it's fun to as we're getting to know each other as a band and as people as thesis it's fun to have that specific instrumentation in mind have that guide what's about to happen and what's coming next. Cool, so we'll look forward to another Esthesis release, right? What was Bill, the reasoning to get with Bill Frisell? I have been wanting to work with Bill and his connection to Denver and to Ron and also his, there are no words to describe just how beautiful his playing is, but one thing I really love about it is how lyrical it is. He just has a voice. We wanted to be around that. Enjoy every second right now that you have exploring the music and releasing the new project that's such a special thing to be able to do well and thanks for taking an early morning hour to talk with me about it much appreciated so give my regards to the gang and we'll go out listening to sweet and lovely from break which features don clement on keyboards dean johnson on bass and matt wilson on drums thank you thank you monica
Thank you for listening to Talking Jazz. My guest today was pianist, composer, vocalist, educator Don Clement. You can hear Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and Mondays at 7 p.m. on WETF 105.7 in South Bend, Indiana, or online at jazzradiowetf.org. And Fridays at 8 p.m. on WICR 88.7, Indianapolis. Previous shows are also on my YouTube channel, Monica Hersig, M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G. Please subscribe to the Talking Jazz playlist. Thank you for listening. <laughs>